What's up, Stellar Crew? Bob MacArthur here for Stellar View Telescopes in the January edition of In the Sky. Yeah, it's January, it's cold, and sometimes we don't want to get out and observe, so that's why it's good to have a grab-and-go setup. And my grab-and-go setup of choice is right here, the SVX-90T on an M2C mount with a Denali tripod. Great solid setup to pick up, plop outside, look up for however long you can stand the cold, and enjoy some of those beautiful things in the winter sky that we're gonna talk about. So let's do it! So this month's observing highlights. January 2nd is perihelion day. That is when the earth is closest to the sun. Remember our seasons are caused by the tilt of the earth, not how close or how far we are from the sun. We're actually furthest from the sun in the month of July. So there's that. Now, January 8th, we got a lot going on. There's a nice grouping of the crescent moon, Venus and Mercury before sunrise. But also on that same day, the crescent moon is actually going to occult or pass in front of the star Antares in the constellation Scorpius. I believe it's on the west coast. You'll actually get to watch the moon pass in front of Antares before sunrise. So yeah, get out, get your scopes out, check that out. January 13th, we have the crescent moon and Saturn just after sunset. Saturn's starting to get lower and lower. The sky is starting to fade into that sunlight. So it's great to get Saturn before we uh, say goodbye to Saturn viewing season. So really cool pairing there of the crescent moon and Saturn. On January 18th, we have the waxing gibbous moon sitting with Jupiter and Uranus. So you get Jupiter, pop over to the moon, pop over to Uranus, get that nice little green disc of Uranus, kind of pale green, I guess. And then we also have on January 20th, the waxing gibbous moon with the star cluster of Pleiades. That's always a fun pairing to see together is that star cluster and the moon. So wide field shot, possibly get out there, check it out. So speaking of the moon and the solar system, let's talk about the planets. So there are your moon phases. New moon is January 11th. So get out to a dark sky, get out there, do some observing, a good dark sky weekend there on January 11th. You know, we all have our thoughts on the full moon, you know, light pollution, that natural light pollution of the moon. You know, I look at the way, I look at that as a good time to look at some binary stars, look at the planets, maybe not some deep sky stuff. Um, but I also do enjoy looking at the uh, first quarter and third quarter moon because you get the sunlight shadow across the uh, craters and the mountains. So, yeah, there's a lot going on there. Now, the solar system, you could actually get all of the planets... Now, we could argue about Pluto, but we won't get into Pluto, planet or not planet. But Mercury, Venus, and Mars are all up before sunrise. Now, Mars is just starting to come up in, into view, so it's not going to be great for several more months. But you can start to get it. So you got Venus and Mercury and Mars before sunrise. And then just after sunset, you could actually get Saturn, Neptune, Jupiter, and Uranus. So... There you go. You want to catch all the uh, main planets? There you go. So let's get over to some star clusters. What do we got going on for star clusters? So great season for some uh, star clusters. M36, 37, and 38 are some of my favorite up there in the constellation of Auriga. They're all kind of uh, kind of clustered right next to each other. Star clusters clustered together. Well, you can bounce from each one and just some really nice star clusters to look at. And of course, the Perseus double star cluster is still up there. Uh, it's it's still one of my favorites. Great two cl star clusters right next to one another. The Pleiades M45 getting higher and higher in the sky. Get out there, check that out. Uh, take some pictures of it. It's a wonderful object to uh, to check out. And then we have NGC 559 or C8. Now, sometimes we all get kind of hung up on the Messier catalog, but there's a lot of other catalogs out there, like the NGC catalog or the Caldwell ca catalog. This is a really nice open star cluster in the constellation of Cassiopeia. So check that one out too. Now let's uh, talk about some nebula. What do we got going on for nebulas? Well, we got the Crab Nebula up there in the constellation Taurus. The Crab Nebula is a uh, supernova remnant. You can get a really nice picture of that or view of that. Uh, depending on your skies, you might see the tentacles in the, in the supernova remnant. So check that out. The Orion Nebula. We are in Orion Nebula viewing season. It is a wonderful nebula to look at. You can enjoy it from dark skies, suburban skies, even in the light pollution, you can still get a little bit of that nebulosity in there. So wonderful, wonderful nebula to look at. And then you have C31, and then there's I, or IC405. So there you go, another 
uh, catalog there, the Flaming Star Nebula, which is also in the constellation of Auriga. So when you're up there bouncing around the star clusters, you can check out the Flaming Star Nebula. And then there's M78, beautiful reflection nebula in the constellation of Orion. So we're really starting to get some uh, nebula and some star clusters. Galaxies are up there too. So Triangulum, Andromeda, check them out. These are some of our closest galaxies. Matter of fact, the Andromeda galaxy is our closest big galaxy. It's a huge spiral galaxy, 2.2 million light years away. Now, Triangulum is also one of those next door neighbor galaxies. Matter of fact, Triangulum and Andromeda and the Milky Way are actually in a group of galaxies called the Local Group, which is about 30 to 40 galaxies. So you can spot some of our nearest neighbors. Now, swing on over to C5 or IC342. This is a, a nice little galaxy. It is a beautiful spiral galaxy, kind of uh, up there in the northern skies in the camel. And then you also have C24 or NGC 1275. This is actually the brightest galaxy, I believe, in the Perseus cluster, uh, Abel 426. So that would probably be a pretty cool wide shot uh, from dark skies getting that Perseus galaxy cluster. So check those guys out too. Let's swing on over and talk about some binaries. I love observing binary stars. You know, it's one of those things that as the moon is getting brighter or if you live in light polluted skies, you can enjoy binary stars. So what do we got for, I, I know there's a lot, but these are some of the fun ones for this month. So Theta Auriga, you have that one up there. So a lot of stuff in Auriga this time of year. It's getting higher in the sky and you can enjoy that. This is a really cool binary. You kind of have a, a brighter component and a fainter secondary. It's a little bit further away. Um, so check that one out. And then there's Rigel in the constellation Orion. You know, sometimes I forget that Rigel's a binary because it's so bright. And you're like, oh, it's a bright star. But it does. It has a nice little uh, component right next to it. And depending on how steady your skies are, it pops really nice. So check out Rigel. And then we have Zeta Persei, the uh, foot of Perseus. This is a, a pretty sweet binary to look at, too, because you have um, a nice brighter primary and then a, a closer kind of fainter secondary. And uh, depending on your seeing, you can pop it out. And then there's one Eretus or one Aries. I know last month we talked about one of the brighter binaries in Aries. And this one's not, you know, don't hear about this one too much. But it is a just a really nice color pairing of uh, two relatively bright stars. So check out that one right there. So there you go. You know, January's cold. I mean, it's if you have a great grab-and-go setup like I showed at the entry video, you should plop, and then you can go out and observe. Um, but get out. I mean, sometimes being out on those quiet, still, cold nights gets you connected to the night sky. And, you know, get that big winter jacket, bundle up, get a hot cup of cocoa or coffee, and look at some objects. You know, sometimes in, uh, the, after the holiday season, hustle and bustle, and you just need a break, get out. I mean, it's, you got some great stuff to look at, whether it's binary stars from the city, you, you, oh, you get the Orion Nebula from the city, the moons, the, uh, the moon, the planets. There's a lot of stuff you can look at from the city skies, rural skies, suburban skies. I think the big thing is just getting out, get your telescope, whether you're astrophotography, get some great shots, or you're a visual observer. Again, just bundle up, get hot cocoa, coffee, get out for a few minutes, grab and go set up, you know, and, and, and just enjoy. We, we all got into this hobby to enjoy the night sky, and sometimes those cold winter nights are like, oh, I don't know if I want to get out or not. But I'll tell you what, every time I do, I'm glad I do. So have fun, get out, observe, and keep looking up.